Good day everyone. So for this day, we're going to discuss data presentation in research. Okay, meron ka ng data. Ang next na gagawin mo ngayon is how to present it so that magkakaroon siya ng meaning sa iyong research. Ano ba ang mga dapat mong gawin sa pag-present mo ng data? But before that, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell if you like this video. Okay, first, let us first define the meaning of data presentation. Data presentation is defined as the process of using various geographical formats to visually represent the relationship two or more data set so that an informed decision can be made based on them. Data presentation refers to the organization of data into table, graph, or charts so that logical and statistical conclusion can be derived from the collected measurements. Okay, now meron ka na ng data ngayon. No? Ang susunod mong gagawin is to organize the data so that um, magkakaroon ng visual representation okay, between uh, two or more data. Okay, pas para mas maintindihan ng reviewer o ng reader. Okay, how can you represent it? How will you do it? Sa pamamagitan ng table, graph, and charts. Why do we need to represent? Why do we need to present, summarize, process, and analyze the data? So, data per se has no meaning, di ba? So, um, we have to analyze them. We have to present them properly para magkaroon ito ng meaning. Data are usually collected in a raw format and thus the inherent information is difficult to understand. Raw format alone of data is difficult to understand. The example of raw data is a list of every purchase at the store, no? a very every second of footage recorded by a security camera overnight and the grades of all the students. So, list alone or footage alone and grades alone um, has no meaning. Okay? So, sa pamamagitan ng uh, tamang presentation ng data mo, so, uh, mas, ma mas madaling maintindihan no, kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng data na yan. However, no matter how well manipulated the information derived from the raw data should be presented, sabi niya, in an effective format. Otherwise, it would be a great loss for both authors and readers. So, yung data mo na nag mo, it has to be presented daw sa isang format na paano ba magiging effective ang isang format. Magiging effective ang isang format kapag uh, sa pamamagitan ng presentation mo ay magkakaroon no, ng kahulugan or meaning ang mga data mo. Okay? So, methods of presentation must be determined according to the data, format, and methods of analysis to be used and the information to be emphasized. Paano, ka, paano mo gagawin ang presentation mo? So, I have to consider no, the data format, no, the methods of analysis, and the information to be emphasized. Okay? In, uh, Inappropriately presented data fail to clearly convey information to readers and viewers. So, sa pag-present mo ng data, dapat uh, pumili ka no, ng pinaka-efektibong uh, method no, para sa iyong presentation or data presentation. Ano ba yung mga methods of data presentation? First is textual presentation. Ginagamit ito to show results and trends and contextual information. Data are fundamentally presented in paragraph or sentences. So instead of using table, graph, and, and um, other, other methods, ang, uh, ano, ang gagawin mo lang dito is to present it in paragraph or sentences. Text can be used to provide interpretation or emphasize certain data. If quantitative information to be conveyed consists of one or two numbers, kapag konti lang yung mga numbers mo or data mo, it's best na uh, gumamit ka ng textual presentation na lang at di mo na kailangang uh, gawin, ilagay yung mga data mo sa table. No? So, for example, there are 30 students in the class of whom are girls while 10 are boys. So, here you only have three uh, numbers, no? 30, 20, and 10. So, you don't need to put 
this data in uh, in a uh, table. So if more than if more if more data, however, are to be presented, so kailangan gumamit ka ng other methods. Ano ba yung mga other methods na pwedeng gamitin? Okay, like for example, you can use the tabular presentation. A table is best suited for representing individual information and represents both quantitative and qualitative information. So, ang table pwede daw gamitin sa quanti and quali. No? Tables which convey information that has been converted into words or numbers in rows and columns. So, ilalagay ang table ay may mga rows no? and uh, columns. So, doon mo ilalagay yung mga converted information converted na into words or numbers. Okay, for example, column A, you can put there uh, the different uh, variables or items. Na, and then table, the second column is, uh, you can put the frequency in the third column. You can write there your percentage. Okay, so, ayun. Anyway, anyone with a sufficient level of literacy can easily understand the information presented in a table. So, sa table, napakadali lang ito basahin na? or intindihin daw. Sabi niya, tables are the most appropriate for presenting both quantitative and qualitative information, just like what I have said a while ago. They can be used to highlight trends or patterns in the data and to make a manuscript more readable by removing numeric data from the text. Ah, hindi na masyadong marami yung mga numeric data mo sa mga text, sa text mo. No? So, it's better na ilagay na lang sila sa table. Okay, so another is graph presentation. A graph is a very active, effective. A graph is a very effective visual tool as it displays data at a glance. So pag makita mo pa lang siya, yung graph mo, so makikita mo na agad kung ano ang gustong i-convey no, ng data mo. It facilitates comparison. So you can use this when you are comparing between variables and can reveal trends also in relationships. Sa mga magitan ng graph, makikita mo yung trending, no? yung mataas, bababa, at saka yung relationship between variables. It can be used for data such as changes over time. Makikita rin sa, freak, sa pamamagitan ng graph no? yung mga changes no? sa mga variables. Makikita mo kung tumataas, pumababa, no? And then frequency or distribution also and correlation. So graph simplify complex information by using images and emphasizing data patterns or trends and are useful for summarizing, explaining, or exploring quantitative data. While graph are effective for presenting large amount of data. So I repeat, no? you can use graph if you have large amount of data, if you want to compare na variables if you want to find out relationship no pwede siyang gamitin kapag yung variables mo or data mo seem to uh, be changing over time and if you if you want to show the frequency distribution uh, of your data okay next is uh, exam a uh, type of uh, graph is a bar graph okay, here is an example of a bar graph so a bar graph is used to indicate and compare values in a discrete category. So if you can see in the bar graph, no, so uh, dog, ant, cat, fish, horse, no, uh, you can easily see no the different the difference, or you can easily compare no the difference between these animals. Okay. And here you can see that the lowest rank is dog. And then second is uh, second in rank is ant, and then cat, and then fish and horse. You can also see pie chart. So kailan ginagamit ang pie chart? A pie chart, which is used to represent nominal data. Okay, so gagamitan mo ng pie chart kapag nominal ang data mo. Ano ba yung nominal data? Nominal data, ito yung is include country, gender, race, hair color, chat, of a group of number. Usually, a nominal data uh, examples are nouns. No? Wala silang order, no? so hindi sila ordinal data. Okay, so kapag nominal data, you can use pie chart. 
it's generally the most appropriate format for representing information group into a small number of categories. Okay, this is an example of a nominal data. If you can see here, no fragrances is 5%. No, it is expressed in percentages. And uh, the whole pie is equivalent to 100%. Now let's go to how to present your data. First is you must write your introductory statement and then write your statement of the problem and then introduce the table, write the table number, write the title of your table, present your table and connect your findings to those related research studies earlier conducted. Okay, connect your findings, I repeat, no? to those related research studies earlier conducted. Okay, di ba? Meron kang related studies. So, ikukonect mo ngayon yung mga findings mo dun sa mga related studies. Okay? How? No? By comparing no? and contrast the results and make your explanation as to how the specified field of inquiry is affected by your present study. You can compare your present study to those previous studies. Anong pagkakaiba nila? Anong pagkakapareho nila? No? It is expected also that your literature review will be used here to support or refute. No? It's either yung mga literature review mo will support or refute the findings of your study. You can also add, add no? additional or you can have additional new literature if it's needed. And then see to it and number three, see to it that the reader would get and understand what you mean in terms of the result findings of your study. If there are hypotheses that you have tested, confirm them or disprove them. Discuss the implications, no, the possible applications of the result of your study towards the end, no, dun ng presentation is dun mo ilalagay yung implication niya at saka yung possible application of the result of your study and then present your results clearly in a straightforward uh, manner or compl uh, complete enough for your reader to interpret them. Implication may also mean what does the result suggest? No? What implication also means something that is suggested without being said directly, something that is implied. Research implications basically refer to impact that your research might have on future research or policy decision or the relevant field of interest of your study. Okay, so now here's an example of how you would present your data. So here we have chapter 3. No, I label this chapter three, although in other researches or other format, you know, it is, this, ref, this refers to chapter four, results and discussion. So the first part is the introductory statement, okay, and then the statement of the problem here, okay, and then introduce your table. Why is it important no, to, to answer this statement of the problem, okay, and uh, why in your in introduction in introducing your table you 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 cite no uh, the importance no of gathering this data and try to introduce no the different data that is that can be found in your table so in this example, the statement of the problem is challenges encountered by working single parents in the learning of their school-aged children during the COVID-19 pandemic. So self-care. So sabi niya, how did he or she introduce the table in a home where there is only one parent? The shared set of challenges included on learning how to manage finances and making quality time for children and oneself. Self-care, sabi niya, is deep important as it will feel in the needs of the parent to perform well in their work and at the same time in assuming their household responsibilities. 
This time of pandemic, most solo parents have admitted being challenged as to taking of themselves, especially their responsibilities, doubled when the new mode of learning was introduced as distance learning where parents play a vital part in providing it. And then nilagay niya dito, Table 14 presents the challenges encountered by working single parent as their ability for self-care during this time of pandemic. And then this is followed by the table. Ang table ay may title. So excuse me, no? nagkamali lang ako. So this should be title, this one, self-care. And type, the number is table 14. Okay, so table number is table 14 and title of your table is self-care. So here is your table. So anong nilalaman niya? No? So meron dito yung uh, items ng questionnaire niya. And then uh, here is uh, yes or no choices and then frequency and percentage. Okay, and then tapos dito, nilagyan niya ng rank. Okay, so after that, no, uh, it detects mo, no, lagyan mo ng narrative, okay, short narrative, no, ng iyong table. So you don't need to write all the data here sa part na to, no, kukunin mo lang yung may relevance or importante, no, na data. Okay, like for example, the highest score or the lowest score, no, yun lang ang ilalagay mo dito sa next part. How does it support no, the, the previous researches or how does it support the previous literature no, or does it support or not, no? Anong pagkakaiba niya ng result mo sa mga dating researches or ano yung similarity ng result mo doon sa previous researches especially yung mga nasa related literature mo okay so for example dito Carl Rogers self actualization ang ginamit niya and then after that you discuss already the implication of your study to your field of specialization Okay, so that's it guys. Sana may natutunan kayo sa ating topic for today. Bye!